Well, it's time to review Animal Crossing the movie. Oh yeah, I forgot, Japan doesn't have any fair use laws, and on the internet if you want to actually do anything, you need to bend over to corporate interests 100% of the time and let them fuck you any way they want. Let's try that Alice in Wonderland thing. I'm sure that'll take off. Is that really fair? I mean, just because what I'm talking about has disturbing or graphic imagery, doesn't mean that I personally am going to be making disturbing or graphic imagery. Should you really blame me for talking about it? Okay. Let's try Milan 2. How about Barnyard? That's been on the play for quite a while, and I'm living in South Park, I swear. Okay, how about... Two hours later. Alright, alright, I got one more. In Spongiac. How is it? I'm a fucking insomniac. Okay, you know what? Fine. I'll play your game. You win. We will be squeaky clean today. I'm going to show you a world where your media is sterilized as much as possible, as much as the powers that be want. We're going to be taking a look at a kid's show designed to be as inoffensive as possible. Back in an era where shows like The Get Along Gang ran wild because parents were so afraid the kids might have picked up bad messages like, maybe someone who has a differing opinion from the group just might be right. As a bonus for me, the company that made this is long dead. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, everyone and anyone in the audience. Is that accepting enough for you? This is the Little Clowns of Happy Town. It took me forever to find the show. It took me even longer to find the perfect opportunity to get into it. But thanks to the Wall Street Journal, I think that now is the perfect time. Normally, I rave and rant about shows and episodes that get way too grotesque and get too shocking for one reason or another. That's what the last review was about, which is currently down because... In Fox's infinite wisdom, they decided to temporarily take down the video because they thought it would be important to protect a show from criticism that spends much of its time criticizing and mocking other people in other works of media. However, shows can go too far in the other direction. Shows that are so eager to tell people, specifically little kids, how wonderful the world is because they've never seen the world before. And of all of them, The Little Clowns of Happy Town is probably the worst. It was designed to be the perfect children's cartoon by Moral Guardians. Every episode was built on the most saccharine morals you can think of, without any of the nuance that's actually involved in these real-world messages. Today, we're going to be talking about one of their episodes on disabilities. The title is I Can Do It. No, really, I'm not joking. And before we begin, I thought that it would actually be important to state that I do personally have a disability. Not the disability that's showcased in the episode, but a disability nonetheless. And like most sterilized things, trying to earn social brownie points by talking about disability, they lump all of the disabilities into the same boat as if they all have the same upsides and downsides. I'm fairly sure that this theme song plays on loop in hell. It goes on introducing every member of the cast because there's no way you'd remember them in the actual episodes. This one starts with a kid named Rodney rescuing a rock from drowning. This was his last test to become a lifeguard. He's also a paraplegic. Swimming is the hardest, but swimming is fun. But if I can, you can too. Oh, it's gonna be one of these, huh? You know, an episode that basically objectifies a disabled person and boils them down to their disability to be an inspiration for the abled. We're not even a minute into this, and I'm already pissed off. The show better have something beyond the morals to interest me, like perhaps a good joke or two. Hey, do you know why people ride horses? Because they're too heavy to carry! <laughs> Get it? <laughs> what? Like, what? How does that make any sense at all? Okay, moving on. Immediately we see a periscope, because no matter what's going on or where the show is taking place, there's a villain that spies on whatever the clowns are doing. No, really, in one episode he was spying on what was going on in a school classroom because one of the clowns was there. My gloom will follow them anywhere. Oh, my name's not awful, be bad. What? Awful, be bad. Okay, well, what is it? Awful, be bad. Okay, I, I get it, being sensitive and critical of your name. My name's the mysterious Mr. Enter. It's also awfully bad, but this is a safe place here. You can tell me in confidence. I'm not gonna laugh. No matter how awfully bad your name is, you can tell me. Awful be bad. Okay, fine. Fuck you. I'm looking it up. All right, can we have a face one, please? This villain's name is literally Awful Be Bad. Of course it is. Half of the time, I think that this show is like a parody you'd see on another show for making fun of this kind of cartoon. And like all villains that look like Dick Dastardly, but it's the actual name of an actual character that actually existed. 
I'm not talking about an actual dick. Okay, okay. We'll play it your way. Like all villains that look like Richard Dastardly, he has two very cliche stereotypical villainous henchmen and... So, Ducky, Kay, you heard what Mr. B. Bat said. We have to get ready for a meeting. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready, Whiny, but I've never seen a camp before. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe how offensive this cartoon just became. Do you know how stereotyped people who talk like this are? Constantly portrayed as idiots? I know that this show was made at a different time. I understand that. But after watching the thousandth Big the Cat, it's just a little hard to watch this in hindsight, and I really wish that the show would be a little bit more socially conscious around people like this. Back with the little clowns, they're teaching the other kids how to be lifeguards, even though those other kids can't swim. But what if you can't swim? What can you do to save a friend? Find someone who can... Reach, throw, row, go! Okay, no. The first thing they suggest doing is reaching in if you're close enough to the drowning person. Which would work great, unless the drowning person is panicking. You know, like a drowning person would. And unless the drowning person is strong enough to pull you in. And keep in mind, it was small children who were watching this. But if this message isn't good enough for you, they've got a song teaching you the rest. What if they're out too far from the land? Throwing the lifesaver, yes, is, is good, pretty obvious advice. However, after that, then they suggest using a rowboat, which is actually a lot harder than it seems. If you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna just row in circles. You know, especially if you're a small child that doesn't have the upper body strength to propel a boat forward. If someone is drowning and you can't swim, either throw them a lifesaver or find someone who can swim. But if I find the boats are all gone, go in yourself. What the f fuck is wrong with you? I don't give a shit. If you cannot swim, under no circumstances go into the water yourself. The only thing that will happen is that you'll both drown. Like, what the hell are you even going on about? Yes, it's unfortunate, but sometimes there's no way you could save a drowning person if you yourself do not know how to swim. Hell, even if you can swim, it's very risky to try and save a drowning person, unless you're specifically trained, because they're panicking and flailing and desperately grabbing onto anything that will keep them afloat. If someone is drowning, the best thing to do is swim out with a flotation device, or find someone who can. There's a point when bullshit morals do become dangerous. Here's my moral. Learn to swim, as soon as possible, and teach your kids to swim. I don't care who you are. One of the most useful things you can learn in an emergency is how to swim. As for your kids, there's no such thing as too young. There are classes that will teach infants how to swim. Okay, what the fuck is with the animation here? His mouth isn't even moving. I mean, the animation here is kind of standard for the era otherwise, better than the 70s, but that's not saying much. We see a call to the camp counselor. Tell me if you heard this one before. A rich corporate guy wants to tear down a summer camp for disabled people to build a factory. Probably without wheelchair access, because he's evil. I mean, the camp counselor hasn't been able to pay his lease, but that doesn't really matter because the corporate guy is evil. And he asks Soth will be bad to make sure they don't renew their lease because he's evil. And they enlist the evil guy's nephew, Billy. Then Off will be bad name, start singing a song. This brings our count up to two for a 22 minute episode, by the way. And we're only a third of the way through. Hopefully this one won't give kids advice that could end up killing them. Reality is not advertiser friendly. How can I describe this song? And he'd be happy as can be. I'm so awful, I'm awful. He's awful, 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 Did you ever play this video game, I Am Mean? It had an intro cutscene animated by the same people who did the Zelda CDI games. Yes, they got work afterwards. Well, this song sounds exactly like that song. Like, exactly like that. Very scary and confusing Destination of my choosing Magic labyrinth of I am Maybe it's just because they're both two evil people wearing purple overcoats wanting to stop kids from doing good things. And they're both people who really shouldn't be singing. And yes, advertiser robot thing, you don't have to say anything. I know that telling people who can't sing that they can't sing is offensive on some level because we don't want to give people the necessary criticism that they need to get better. I understand that. Okay, there's this character called Hiccups. She, uh... Uh-huh. Then what did he say? 
Hiccups, quite a lot. Most of the episodes from the show are 11 minutes. This one seems to be an exception. And it seems like they're really struggling to hit that number. Which is why this episode crawls to a halt. To have hiccups hiccup a lot. She eventually ends up telling the clowns that they've got to raise money for the camp. They end up uh, deciding to put a show on for Parents' Day to help them raise the money. It's our only hope, so it has to work. Yes, something has to work 100% by it being the virtue of being your last option. The world definitely works that way. Meanwhile, at the ice cream parlor, Rodney and Random Clown 32 are celebrating. Then Billy comes in to taunt the other kids about the camp closing down, even though there's no way for him to tell that those kids go to that particular camp. You know, unless he's assuming that all people in wheelchairs go to the same camp for people in wheelchairs. Or the people behind this show assume that all people in wheelchairs are interested in the same exact things. You and I have a lot in common. We both have disabilities. I can't walk, and you can't be nice. What? What? Uh, what? Okay. I I if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'm uh, I I'm gonna go and uh, break Tumblr. I, I think they'll have a very fun time figuring this one out. Being mean is a disability. Like, I get it in a metaphorical sense, like if you're an asshole, you're gonna have a harder time in some situations, but what the living hell? But the difference is, my disability doesn't make me a mean person. Yes, and Billy's, um, disability doesn't make him unable to walk. Like, assuming that being mean is a disability at all to you, that's not a difference. A disability stops you from being able to do a thing. His stops him from being able to do a thing, yours stops you from being able to do a thing. Once again, what the living hell? There's being smug and preaching, and then there's just being confusing. Speaking of which, I love how they erase the character of this disabled person and put him on a moral pedestal, so the show can claim how accepting they are of disabled people. You know, this might make a kid in a wheelchair feel empowered while watching this. But if he, or she, I said or she, advertiser friendly robot thing, but if they end up failing to live to the standards set by Rodney here, they might feel even worse than they did before watching this, as they feel that the other positive messages spread by the show were bullshit. Kimmy, why are you crying? Because this camp is the only place where everybody treats me like a real boy. Okay, what are you, Pinocchio? I get what he's inferring, I think, that he feels accepted here and not bullied, but that's a weird way to word things. Even when I personally was bullied, I wouldn't word being accepted being treated like a real boy. The people who wrote the show obviously didn't English very well, but to be fair, this was probably their third language, and they only learned English through a teacher who spoke a very bad version of the second language. And we should be very proud of them for doing this well. Is that good enough for you, advertiser-friendly robot? In the middle of the night, Awful Be Bad Name and his group go ahead and destroy the camp in a very long sequence that continues to try my fried patience. They mess up the girls' cabin, and they make a very spicy chili. And then we meet Rodney's mom, who is incredibly overprotective of Rodney, and doesn't think he can do anything. And we're supposed to dislike this parent for being overprotective. I'm pissed now. Well, fuck you. You know what? I'm mean. And that's a recognized disability here. So if you don't get off my back, you can expect an op-ed about this tomorrow. I do have a blog, and I will use it. So you better shut up, you stupid advertiser robot. To be fair, my disability isn't a physical one. It's Asperger's, which is a disability on the autistic spectrum. I won't claim that I've had as hard a time as someone who's been in a wheelchair all of their life. That would be preposterous. But the one thing I will say is that if someone needs a wheelchair, it's obvious. If a parent can't figure that out, then they've got their own disability. When you have a neurological disability, it's usually diagnosed very late in life, if at all, because it's not obvious. Well, it might be obvious, but only in hindsight. I was diagnosed at 19, after I had graduated high school, and along the way I had to deal with all of the shit. Up until third grade, because I didn't socialize properly, I was bullied to hell and back. Up until fifth grade, I didn't have any friends to speak of. And all along the way, my grades suffered because why the hell would I care about this place of hostility? People with autism are frequently the targets of bullying because it delays social development. And when people don't know that you have autism or Asperger's syndrome, they're going to assume that it's your fault for not trying to make friends. All throughout high school, teachers and counselors spend a lot of time trying to get you to go to college. I always say that they spend so much time trying to get kids to go to college nowadays that if they use that time instead to teach kids, then they would have learned enough to not need to go to college at all. One of the possible symptoms of autism is an intense interest in something like, say, Pokemon or the dictionary. Some people have this interest all of their life. Sometimes, though, these interests can change every few months or years. An interest is a very light word. In another context, they'd be considered lifelong passions. The things you know you're built for. The purpose of your life. Imagine that changing every few months and what you used to dedicate your entire life to. You couldn't stand doing. It would stress you out beyond 
all believe. It's something that you now want to avoid if possible. And then imagine people wanting you to go to a place where you need to be absolutely 100% sure that you need to do this one thing for 40 years of your life, even though the typical neurotypical American has 17 jobs throughout their entire life. And they also want you to go into thousands of dollars of debt when you're not sure that you're going to be interested in this topic tomorrow because you literally cannot control it. Even beyond my education, my Asperger's caused me many problems. When I didn't want to wear a tie because they feel like they literally strangle me, I was a fussy kid. I would sit in a room near someone for hours on end, waiting for them to start a conversation with me because I literally did not know how to start one myself. Now, do you think that I would have liked to have a parent who gave this disorder a modicum of attention? That I had teachers and educators who gave the inkling of caring and understanding? You're expecting me to dislike this parent for taking her child's disability seriously. As someone who is, metaphorically, expected to go through life without a wheelchair at all. From the bottom of my heart, fuck you. Yes, a parent can be overprotective and limit their disabled child's potential even further. Through stereotypes or just, ahem, <laughs> caring too much. Here's a little insight, we don't know how Rodney became paralyzed. It sounds like it doesn't really matter, but how would this overprotective mother appear if it was because of, say, a car crash that she was responsible for on some level? Look, due to how Rodney acts, I know that the people behind this didn't talk to any people with disabilities. Due to how the mother acts, I know that they didn't talk to any people who have kids with disabilities. They're just using the stereotypes of these characters to preach about how great and how better than you they are. And if you're wondering, this is why virtual signaling gets such a bum rap. They're nowhere near as perfect as they pretend to be. Speaking of virtue signaling, the clowns managed to convince the parents that their camp is perfect. Hey, what's green and sings and dances? Elvis Parsley, get it? <laughs> like Hiccups keeps hiccuping, Big Top here keeps making stupid puns. They get old a hundred years before he says them. Where's Rodney? I thought he was with you. Uh, yes ma'am, he went back to his room to pick up something. You let him go alone? Okay, well apparently we're supposed to think that this parent is overprotective for caring that their wheelchair-bound child is going through the woods. Alone. Woods that contain bears and wolves and bees and a shit ton of other nasty things. It's not their fucking backyard. I know the feeling, I've got a million of them. Is it really too much to ask for for a fucking scyther? Pokemon Go is still relevant, right? Shut up! No one asked for your opinion! No one wants your opinion! And then we see Billy falling in the water after stealing equipment. Of course, he can't swim and neither can his father. So it's up to Rodney. He throws out a lifesaver, but it doesn't go far enough. This leaves the only other option to swim for it. He gets to Billy, and then instead of swimming to the rowboats that are like, right there, he decides to go all the way back. Seriously, they're right there! It just seems like, kind of a waste of energy to be honest. And everything is happy and the camp counselor guy gets to land forever. Yay! I just want you to realize that disabled kids can do the same things that you do. Wait, what? You do know what the word disabled means, right? It literally means you are not, which is where the dis comes from, able to do something. Maybe I'm just misunderstanding the wording again. Like I said, written in the third language, badly translated from the second. Luckily, to help us understand what they were going for, they sing us a song. Okay, according to the little clowns of Happy Town, disabilities don't exist, or they don't do anything. They just don't- No, you fucking idiots, that's- What the hell are you even going on about? Yes, disabilities prevent people from doing things, or at the very least, they make it harder for these people to do things. That's the very definition of the word! For example, people with a disability of blindness cannot see. People with a disability of deafness cannot hear. Yes, some people with disabilities can do things that able people can do, just with difficulties, but some people physically or mentally cannot. And I'm sure that the ones that cannot are going to have a very fun time watching this episode. It's weird. An episode about accepting people with disabilities is assuming that people with disabilities are so rare that they couldn't possibly be watching this episode. The word disability actually means something. No, we shouldn't assume or stereotype disabled people, but this kind of logic that disabled people can do exactly what able-bodied people can do can lead to a lot of fucking problems. For example, let's take dyslexic people. Did you know that it's been proven that all they need is extra time on standardized tests for it to measure their ability and not their disability? But because they're just like you, they don't need extra time, even if it forces them to be unable to pass that test and be unable to graduate. But we should treat them exactly the same as everybody else and not have any concern for their disability whatsoever. Perhaps we should start giving blind people a driver's license. 
I mean, they can drive just like everyone else, they just have a different way of doing it. The sidewalk! Does it really matter anymore? I can be as nice as possible, but at a certain stage of the game, I will be taken out of context by the media and slandered for all I'm worth, if I'm fortunate enough to even get that far. Look, if you want to play a game of holier than thou, I'll be happy to play. I might not win, but anyone who plays this game with me isn't getting out of it bloodless. As a person with a disability, would I want my child to go through the same childhood of being assumed to be just like everyone else? No! Fuck no! The term special needs exists for a reason. Yes, there are a million ways that people with disabilities get treated. I've seen many of them. I've been through many of them. But there are certainly worse ways to treat a disabled person, but it doesn't mean that this is a good one. You know, pretending people with special needs don't have special needs. And here's the thing, I've seen, well, heard, this message done better. Everybody stutters one way or the other, so check out my message to you. As a matter of fact, don't let nothing hold you back. If the scat man can do it, brother, so can you. I'm the scat man. This is Scatman John in his biggest hit, The Scat Man. He was a chronic stutterer for his entire life, and he ended up having a successful career as a singer. He used his stutter to help him scat, and he could sing without stuttering because singing and talking take place in different parts of the brain. It's not exactly talking to disabled people directly, but it comes across as much better and much more communicative, as someone who has had the difficulties with who he is. Going back to blindness, this here is a YouTuber called Tommy Edison. His entire channel is about describing the experiences of being born blind. Like, how he visualizes things, or how he dreams. He's built a career off of this, and he seems like just the nicest and happiest person in the world. And he doesn't pretend that he's not blind, or he does the same thing as sighted people. He knows there's a difference, and he takes it in good humor. As a person with a disability, these are the kind of people who inspire me. Not this pandering, watered-down bullshit that exists in its own fictionalized version of reality, where no one ever gets hurt and everything is squeaky clean. I hate this kind of bullshit. Back in the 80s, or even today, YouTube isn't advertiser-friendly because of off-color jokes, fine. Then either is Family Guy. If you can remember, in our last review, they had a joke where they told specifically 14-year-olds how to cut themselves. I mean, how much have I personally reviewed that would not be considered advertiser-friendly over the current standards we're given here? <laughs>